All right, so we are back at the shop. <laughs> Funny to think that I was on a beach a week ago and it is snowing today. <laughs> Fun. Anyway, now comes the time I have to go through all of these shells. And some of them are not getting touched. But all of these have to go through the acid bath, so I'd rather do that sooner than later. And <laughs> it's going to take a while. So these are all the king's crowns. We'll probably start with them. And these are all of the whelks. And again, this bag is going to take a while to get through. Um, don't need to go through those really. Those don't need to get touched. I still can't. This is the weirdest thing I've ever found beach combing, I swear. I can't get over that. <laughs> and obviously, as you can see, I went ahead and bought some shells because I have a hard time walking away from certain things like this beautiful. One thing I also wanted to point out before I start is if you're getting shells from, say, somewhere like Sanibel where the shells are already in really good condition I would recommend against doing the acid soak. The acid soak is really for shells that are extremely weathered or have a big calcium or uh, salt buildup on them but I mean if your shells are already fairly clean definitely go the water bleach or vinegar or even just Dawn dish soap route because it in the long run you could actually hurt the quality of, of a nice shell by putting it through the acid like uh, for example something like a cowrie or an olive shell if it's already got a good shine to it the only thing that's gonna happen in by putting it in the acid is you're gonna destroy that luster which is not ideal the only reason I put my shells and again I don't even put all of my shells through it's just the ones that are really weathered the only reason they get put through is because where I get my shells they have a really thick um, calcium and salt buildup layer and that buildup layer is ridiculous I mean I've tried pretty much everything you can I've done the water bleach solution leaving it for hours to days even <laughs> tried vinegar, tried Dawn dish soap, and with certain shells that I bring back, they are just far too coated to ever remove them fully. Like, even I, the ones that I get 80% off, I mean, you can still, there's not half as much color as I get from the, the muriatic acid soak. So I guess before you go the acid route, check your shells and make sure that it's actually going to be worth it in the long run. should give a good example of why I keep saying it's going to take a while. These ones are going to look great. These ones are going to look great. A bunch of those are going to look really good. I'm hoping these come out well. Not so sure about the olives. They might be a little too bleached. You'd be amazed how much bubbles come back after the bath. These ones are probably going to color up. These ones I know will color up. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. 
All right, so here is what you're gonna need. Some muriatic acid, which I got this jug at Walmart for, I think it was $6.99. And I have used probably about, let's see, about this much in a year. So definitely cheap. A small container anything that isn't metal because the acid will etch through the metal if you're not careful or fast about it to put the acid in and I usually do a mixture of one part muriatic acid to two parts water and then this will get filled with just clean fresh water and that is just to rinse off the shells when they come out of the bath some cheap tongs I know I just said no metal, but these are literally from the dollar store, so <laughs> I don't care if they get destroyed. I bought them specifically for this purpose. These are for the smaller shells, just so I don't have to <laughs> individually try to hold on to them with the tongs and yeah. And I highly suggest some, some very thick rubber gloves, because that acid is some serious business a better idea of how much they'll change. So here's one that's kind of grimy. So again, grab it with the tongs. I usually go one, two, three, four, five, pull it out, and rinse it off. Some of them will actually need a little more than that. It just depends on how weathered the shell is. Looks like this one that was about perfect. So again, you can see just how much they're gonna color up from that. Here, I'll take my gloves off so I can get a closer up. Yeah, and as you can see, the before and after is astronomical. These will color up like crazy once you put them through the bath. Before I move on and start dipping the rest, I wanted to kind of demonstrate how this stuff eats away the the moss layer and how to clean that off. If you look at this one it has a really thick algae coating all over it and the acid breaks it down so you can come in with a toothbrush and remove it very easily but I just wanted to kind of stop for a second so I could kind of demonstrate what to do in that situation. And as you can see, it cleaned up very well. Again, like I said, I'll have to get a Q-tip to go get the inside of it, but yeah, it cleans up really well. All right, back to it. All right, I ran into something else I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit. I do like the look of barnacles. I don't, however, like the look of worm shells. And as you can see, that's a really pretty cockle as soon as I get those off. So a good way to get rid of those is take, really just a screwdriver will work just fine. I use a chisel every now and then, but you kind of just crush it. and then get into that rut and peel them out. They actually are very easy to remove, it's just it's a bit time consuming. Definitely worth it in the long run if you don't want them there though. So I'll get these off really quick and come back once I'm finished. Alright, here is that same shell now that I got all the worm shells off. And it is gorgeous. It came right off too. Oh, just like I said, crush them with a chisel or a flathead screwdriver and then you can kind of get into those notches to kind of pop them out.
Alrighty, here they all are. I'll get some close-ups in just a minute, but man, did some of these transform. I'll make sure to include some before and after pictures at the end of the video also. And yeah, you can really see that some of them came back beautifully. Like those bubbles aren't even recognizable anymore. And I just wanted to point out, I'm sure someone would ask in the comments if I didn't. Yes, there is a hole in this one. No, it is not from the acid. I just collected a shell that had a hole in it. <laughs> Same with these over here. And some of those king's crowns. That's why I do five second dips, because otherwise it can eat into your shell a little bit. Oh, also, probably should address this. Again, no, those pores are not from the acid. I collected a shell that had pores in it already. <laughs> okay, just wanted to get that out of the way. This mob mouth is really pretty. You know what, I might have to zoom out a little bit so I can actually get close-ups. I just wanted to do a quick overview. Alright. Yeah, I'd say the King's Crowns came out looking great. Again, I'm not in the best lighting right now, but they do have a natural shine now. That's without even polishing them. Very pretty. Here, let me show a couple others. I believe this is a sharp rib drill. There we go. Very pretty little thing. Um, what else? These tulips absolutely transformed. I mean, they were completely coated in that film, pretty much pure white. Yeah, unrecognizable now. I believe those are banded tulips. Here's a small true tulip. Again, that was pretty much white beforehand. Let's see, what else? Oh, I'd never found one of these before, so I was very excited. But found a stingray barb on the beach. And look at the barbs on that thing. It is beautiful now that it's cleaned up. I could not even believe my eyes when I saw this. <laughs> so cool. Alright, um... These are one of my favorite shells. And again, they are unrecognizable compared to how they used to look. Broad-ribbed Carditas. They look great now. Nice clean inside. Oh, one thing I also wanted to say, I don't ever, ever, ever dip things like jingle shells. They're really fragile, very delicate, so it's not, you're not going to get anything good out of it. All you're going to do is just destroy your shell. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. And the bubbles. They are one of my favorites because they just transform completely. Alrighty, well, that's probably going to do it for this one. I have a massive amount of footage from Florida that I'm still going through, so I hope to have a, the next one out here shortly. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and yeah, I'll have another one soon.